G'day and welcome to another episode of Tomo's Tune-Ups, all things DIY and mechanical. And today, once again, we're working on my 74 Leyland Mini. Today, we're gonna to be installing a short shift kit. So I bought this today for about $120 delivered from Carcraft at Silverwater in New South Wales, Australia, for those of you who don't know where that is. All right, let's open it up and have a look. Okay, so this is our new gear lever. Uh, the difference here is the fulcrum has moved up a little bit further from the old one. When we pull it out, we're gonna have a look and I'm going to explain it to you. So a little bit of physics for you all. So if you imagine if this is a straight piece of steel and we position the fulcrum, which is the pivot point directly in the middle, if we apply five kilos on one end, in order for us to keep that balanced, we're gonna to have to apply five kilos of force on the other end. Now, how a short shifter works is simply put like this. If we shorten the distance between the load and the fulcrum, the effort becomes shorter, which therefore creates a shorter throw. If we then flip it around the other way and we apply load at one end and have a greater distance between the load and the fulcrum, the amount of effort applied to move is quite significant in order for this to move a great deal giving us the opposite of what we want. Now what we want is mechanical advantage, which is exactly what this does. So if you hold it upright, the distance between here and here is greater. Okay, so for demonstration purposes, I've pulled out the original gear shifter. So as you can see, the distance between the fulcrum and the effort is quite long, whereas the distance between the load and the fulcrum is quite short, which gives us a very short throw. So we have very little mechanical advantage here. If I then grab the new one and we put them side by side, you can see the clear difference between the effort and the fulcrum on each one. This one here gives us a greater mechanical advantage. Now, a mechanical advantage is when you apply a little bit of effort to do a lot of work. For instance, if you are trying to move a heavy log that has fallen in your backyard, you can't move it by hand and you certainly cannot pick it up. You wedge another piece of timber underneath it with a large stick and you apply force at this end, moving the load on the other end. So it takes very little effort with a longer stick to be able to move a heavier item. That is referred to as mechanical advantage. That's exactly what we're gonna do. All right, let's go to the car and let's install it. So on the Mini, there are two types of gear selectors. There is a rod change and there is a remote change. On mine, I have the rod change, so we're gonna go and remove our gear stick now. Now, having removed this already, it's going to be quite simple. All we're going to do is unscrew our gear knob. Once we've done that, we're then going to remove the boot as it comes off. This will be the same application for most cars. It's then got a collar down the bottom, which we are going to turn. We're going to release, and that's going to pull straight up. And then we're going to pull the old gear shifter straight out. Now, the spring and the washer we're going to reuse, so we can then transfer that straight over. Now, once it's installed, we're now going to get our spacer bracket and fit it to the selector mechanism. Now, because we have a greater throw, we have a spacer bracket. So it's going to push it up a little bit further, and that's what's going to give us our leverage. So there are two locating tabs. I've already removed one because it was a little bit of a mission. But there's this little locating tab just down here where my finger is. We're going to slide that out with the finger, and then out it comes. That's what locates your gear stick. So we're not going to use those anymore as we're going to now use bolts instead. So once the two pins are removed, we're then going to get our spacer. Now these are the two bolts I was talking about, this one here and this one down the end. They're going to screw into the housing of the gear selector and then these two pins are what's going to locate the new gear stick. Once it's fitted, we're then going to tighten up those two bolts on either side. Remember that when you are tightening bolts to do them evenly so it creates an even mating surface on both sides. And for those of you mini enthusiasts out there, you will notice that my tunnel is not round like it normally is, or like it should be. Now this is because that when I got it rebuilt, we decided to change the tunnel and give it more of a modern feel with a square box. Hence why it doesn't fit properly here, and that there is significant gap at the top that doesn't fit the tunnel 100%. Now I will endeavour to get a new spacer washer here, as it is quite elongated, instead of circular. And then the last thing to go on is just going to be our little collar, which is going to go straight over the top and then clip straight in like the original one. Twist, and we are set. Now, 
you can see the throw here is significantly shorter. I should have actually filmed it beforehand, but sadly I didn't. So we can go from first, second, third, fourth, reverse is across, slightly up, and then back down. Given the car is not running at this stage, it's gonna be hard to tell, but tomorrow morning when we go for a drive, we are going to test it out. All right, so the last thing that we're gonna do before we cut it to tomorrow's drive is refit the boot, which is just on the ground down here. We fit that either way, it doesn't particularly matter. There's no particular way that this goes. And then we're just gonna fit the gear knob, which is down there as well, and turn that on until it goes. So you will find that if you do this kit on your car, it will be quite similar to fitting this, but this is very mini specific. Okay, off to tomorrow's video. Okay. 
stage in there, I could see exactly what was going on. Ended up being a bad alternator. The coolant temperature gauge, which I explained to you before, was that I couldn't tell the difference between what hot meant and when it was too hot. As for the fuel gauge, well that's just an old style fuel gauge which I decided to upgrade. I also run a thermo fan on this which is electronically controlled as well as a manual fan. Because the Mini was designed to draw in air through the grill all the way through onto the engine and then get sucked out through the left hand front wheel arch. When you're sitting in set traffic lights or when it is stinking hot, they tend to overheat which is just a normal thing. You do get a bit of excessive engine noise from the fan, but it is what it is. It beats overheating, and it beats sitting at 110 degrees, cooking the engine. Now remember, my engine is made out of cast iron, compared to a lot of engines nowadays which are made of alloy. Cast iron is obviously heavier and is more susceptible to heat, whereas alloy isn't. But alloy is obviously quite light. Alright guys, that's it. I'm at work. This thing drives like an absolute dream. If only I'd done this four years ago when I got it on the road. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have an excellent Saturday. I'll see you next time on an episode of Tomo's Tune-Ups, all things DIY and mechanical.